Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to help the channel grow and keep up to date with our latest videos. Hi and welcome to another video by me, Flo Joe. Today we're looking at Power Automate Actions and we're going to be looking at how we can get the current environment information that the flow is running on. So why would we want to do this? Well, in the case of many-to-many -many relationships, you need the fully fledged URL. And if you're changing between environments, you're going to need to change that URL. So why not do it automatically? So therefore we can avoid using environmental variables and essentially automate this. There's also the fact that you may want to provide error reporting on flows failing. You might want to grab the environmental name and so on. So there's lots of reasons why we may need the environment information when running flows, especially if like me, you work with clients and you're going to be moving from one, one environment such as dev to test to production, you're going to want to do certain steps um, within each environment. And you don't want to keep going and updating that particular flow every time you move a solution across. Okay, so the action we're gonna be looking at is get environment as admin. This action allows us to get the ID, the type, the name, which would be the GUID, the location, the region, the display name, the created and modified, um, the provisioning state, the creation type, such as a user creation, uh, environmental SKU, the, is it a default environment, yes or no, and more, such as the URLs. So as you can see, we can get all of the information we would actually want on an environment um, from this one action. So what does it look like when you add it to Power Automate? So when you add this action to Power Automate, it's going to look like this. It's going to have the environment section that you're going to be able to select. So if you press the drop down button, you'll be able to select an environment. However, if you select the enter custom value, you can provide an environment GUID. So if you provide the environment GUID, then it will get the current environment GUID that you pass through and get all the information. Now you can see that there is a show advanced options section there. Well, this allows you to change the API version. Now by default, um, it will be set for you and I suggest you not change this unless you know exactly what you're doing with the API versions. Okay, so if we get the current environment GUID that our flow is running on, we can pass it into this action, the get environment as admin, and we can get all the information on the environment that our flow is running on. Well, luckily there is a function that does this and that is the workflow function. Now I've created a video that goes into a lot of detail about exactly what the workflow function does and all of the different types of information it returns. So I suggest you look at that if you want to learn more about the workflow function. But essentially it provides the information on the current flow that is running. Now this gives us um, the information that we're going to need such as the current environment GUID. Now how we actually get that is we use this code. We do workflow, open parentheses, close parentheses, then we use the square brackets, uh, single quotation marks, put tags, then we open another square bracket, single quotation marks again, and we put environment name. Now the environment name is the GUID of the environment, and it returns the current environment GUID. So you can actually get the current environment GUID straight out from your flow just using this simple function. Now what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to pass it in to the action that we're using, the get environment action, and essentially get all the environment information from the GUID that the flow is currently running on. So let's say we are running our flow in dev it's going to get all of the dev environment information because the workflow is going to return the current GUID from when the flow is run but let's say we move via a solution 
um, our flow to test, then the workflow is going to return the GUID for test. And when we pass that into the get environment as admin information action, it's then going to get all the information for a test and so on. So then if we go to production, it will also do it for production. So I'm going to put this information in the description so you can just copy and paste this. You don't have to write it out yourself and um, it will be easily accessible for you. So just copy it out of the description if you're wanting to use this. So let's say we do all of this. Let's talk about reusability. Let's say we were going to actually do this um, and use this type of thing in multiple flows. Well, you can simply create a child flow so that we can access the code that we've created and return it to any flow that we have um, without having to do these steps and actions and functions over and over. You can just simply call the child flow and have that information returned. So we're going to look at that after we've actually gone through the uh, live demo steps of getting the workflow information and then the environment information back to us. So let's jump over to Power Automate and see how this works. Okay, so I'm on Power Automate. I've got a flow created called Get Environment Information. I've got a manual trigger. And what we're firstly going to do is we're going to add a compose action. Now the reason why we're going to do this is just so we can see what workflow information we can get back. So if you click on inputs, select expression, just type workflow in and just select it and hit OK. We can then run this and see what information we get back. Okay, so our flow ran successfully. And if we open the compose, you can see all of the different type of information that we get back um, from here. But the thing that I want to highlight is the tag section and then the environment name. So then we can get the actual GUID that we want back. So if I hit edit, open up the workflow, and then I'm gonna open up square brackets, single quotations, and write tags. And then, so we've gone into the tag section now. And then I'm gonna open this square bracket, single quotations, and write environment name. Now the name has a capital N, so make sure you don't miss that. Just click on update and now what we're going to do is just run this again and we'll see what we get back. So now what we should do is not get all of the actual workflow information back, we're just getting the name. So we're getting the GUID back and as you can see here, I've got the GUID back for me. Well, that's great. Now we can move on to the get environment as admin. So if I click on edit, I'm going to add a new step and I'm going to type get environment as admin. And what you're going to notice is it's not going to show up. What you want to do, just type as admin and then open up the drop down you're going to see this power platform for admins. Not entirely sure why it doesn't show up in the search. But if you open up the drop down and make sure you check the power platform for admins, not power apps for admins, make sure it's the power platform for admins section. Open that up and you'll get a list of all the different actions you can use. Now you're going to want to scroll down to the get environment as admin, select that, it's going to sign in and once it's signed in then you can simply open it up and select your environment or you can press enter custom value you're going to want to select enter custom value and then in this instance i could pass the compose but we're adding this action this compose action needlessly we don't need to have this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open this i'm going to copy what we did in our compose i'm going to come back into my get environment as admin go into my expression and just essentially write it again my workflow tags and environment so if i press ok there it's going to do the function directly in this action and i can just remove this compose as it's not needed okay so 
now what's going to happen is it's going to run run this function and get the environment name which is the GUID it's then going to use this GUID in the environment section of the get environment as admin and it's going to return all of the environment information back to me so I'm just going to run that do save and test yep continue and run flow okay so the flow is running it's doing the workflow and then it's getting all of the information for the environment and as you can see here we now have all of my environments information my environment location is based in the United Kingdom the Azure region unit so the region my environment is in is the south of the UK now you can use this region for doing um, different times uh, if you was like uh, working East Coast and you had an East region as your region unit you could adjust uh, a time zone based on that we have the display name which is Flojo default we have when it was created so I created my environment back in 2019 and we have all this information so we've got um, all of the metadata organization information uh, if there was any uh, creation templates all of this different type of information that you can use to essentially build out URLs build out uh, error notifications and essentially have every bit of environment information that your flow is currently running on right delivered to you in one simple action so let's go and move on to reusability this is great if you're just uh, going to use it once in a particular flow but if you're going to use it in multiple flows what you can do is rather than have this uh, action and workflow stuff created all the time you can essentially just add another step and what we're going to do here oops, um, is we're going to do a respond and you're going to choose respond to a power app or flow and then we're going to add an output and then we can add um, a response now the problem that you're going to have here is that you're going to want to pass in a lot of information such as JSON and you can't do that here so what we're going to do is instead of doing this we're going to add a new step and put a response So you can, in the request section, you've got a response, status code of 200 to say, yep, it's gone well. And in the body, we can essentially pass through the entire body um, of our returned information from our environment. And this will essentially pass through the JSON back um, from our child flow rather than passing simply uh, select uh, part of information it's broken up by strings so that is how you can use get environment as admin action to easily pass information back via a child flow or simply just grab all of the environmental information that your flow is running so that you can move between environments and automatically get the relevant URLs environment names whatever you want about your particular environment that your flow is running on without having to manually do anything. Thanks for watching another video by me, Flow Joe. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button or select a video on your screen right now to continue learning more about the Power Platform.